to punish all the nations. Do not be merciful to any wicked transgressors. And he's making a big statement here. You know, anybody that sins, anybody that comes against you, O oh Lord, wake up and do something. I, I sound so weird to me. Is it me? Oh, okay, <laughs> it's me then. <clears throat> uh, awake to help me and behold. And then he says, at evening they return. They growl like a dog and go all around the city. This is the time period where uh, Saul uh, sends the men to his house to stand outside of the house and wait for him, set a trap. And his wife, uh, Michal, or Michael, it's M-I-C-H-A-L, Michal, she puts this uh, weird uh, idol, teraphim, household god in the bed and covers it up to make it look like David so that uh, they'll, they'll believe that he's in the bed asleep. And he got down out of the window. And, uh, of course, then, you know, when her daddy shows up and says, why, you know, where, where is he? She said, well, he threatened to kill me. Well, from there on out, <laughs> David and Mikael just were on the outs from there on out because she lied and kind of made herself look like she was still on her daddy's side rather than her husband's side. And then um, he goes on and says, uh, They growl like a dog and go all around the city. Indeed, they belch with their mouth. Swords are in their lips, for they say, Who hears? Swords are in their lips. Cutting words. You, have, you know, people like that. Who hears? But you, O oh Lord, shall laugh at them. You shall have all the nations in derision. I will wait for you, O oh you, his strength. For God is my defense. My God of mercy shall come to meet me. God shall let me see my desire on my enemies. Wow. Wow. <sighs> Sometimes we wish bad things on people who come against us. <laughs> wow. Do not slay them. Now he's not asking God to kill them. He's asking them, you know, just do something. But don't kill them lest my people forget. Scatter them by your power. Bring them down, O Lord, our shield. For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips. Now think about it. God didn't ask. God didn't ask. David didn't ask God to kill Saul. He said just scatter him. Do something. Yeah, just do something. But don't kill him now. I'm not asking you to kill this, this man. David, you know, that was not his heart's desire, uh, which made him a man after God's own heart. He didn't want to kill him. Let them even be taken in their pride and for the cursing and lying which they speak. Let their pride bring them down in some way. And all this lying and cursing and, and, and the evil that they do and say, do something that, uh, but don't kill them. I'm not asking you to, you know, because you're a God of life, not a God of death. Consume them in wrath. Consume them that they may not be. And let them know that God rules in Jacob to the ends of the earth. And at evening they return. Talking about these men who were coming after him on behalf of Saul. They growl like a dog and go all around the city. They wander up and down for food and howl if they're not satisfied. That, uh, you know, enemies are like uh, hungry dogs. Always prowling. Isn't that what the devil does? Always after you. Always after you. But Gail, you find out you're covered, right? Covered. 100%. No matter what happens, we are covered by his righteousness. Covered. Now, are people going to come against you? Yeah. Is the enemy going to attack? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and then he says, For I will sing of your power. Yes, I will sing aloud of your mercy in the morning. Isn't that what Jeremiah said? Your mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. For you have been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. Sometimes it's just the peace that God gives you in the time of trouble, isn't it? It's just the peace that overwhelms you. Because frustration can overwhelm real quickly. Super easy. And you can wallow in that anxiety and that panic and all the stuff that comes along with it. Uh, stomach hurts. You know, your body reacts and you got crazy you know, uh, physical reactions to psychological feelings that we have. To you, O oh my strength, I will sing praises, for God is my defense, my God of mercy. 
which makes me want to be merciful. Isn't that what he showed you? He was merciful. He didn't ask uh, God to kill Saul. He said, scatter him. Do something. Confuse him. And sure enough, God does, and I want to show you that in the lesson today. Okay, that was the intro. What do you want to pray about? <laughs> everything, and the weather's been so wonderful. We roasted marshmallows last night over a fire. Had hot chocolate. It was just fun. Um, and uh, Tiffany okay? She's okay. Oh, good. Okay. Good little break. Good for you. Yeah. Yay. All good. Yay. Okay. Oh, I bet it was marvelous. Oh, fun. Uh huh. Well, good. That's fun. Great night for it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, good. Okay. Matt Gaddy, you usually pray for Matt Gaddy. You usually pray for Matt Gaddy. Okay. All right. President and his wife have, have tested positive for COVID. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Kristen. Okay. Good. Really? Well, go, God. That's. Hey, but she's here. That's awesome. I know at the end of every day I think, thank you, Lord, I made it through another day. Yay. <laughs> yes. Right. Miss Bercy, absolutely. Kirk, okay. Praise. her heart. Two months. Yeah. Hmm. Mr. Ronald? <laughs> yep. We do. Yeah, we, everybody, we kind of know what everybody's going to say. Sort of, kind of. Yeah. got a family reunion coming up, so Friday I'm shooting up toward Greenville, so I get to hang out with my sister and brother, so yay. Uh, actually, um, uh, MUSC has uh, uh, decided to evaluate him on the 15th for a liver transplant. Yeah. It's a one full day. They said we'd be there for a full day. Uh-huh. They said it'd be a full day, all I know. Yes. Yeah. I have no idea. I've not ever done this before, so I don't know. 
I mean, they're evaluating him to see if he needs a liver. I don't know. <laughs> I'll, I, hopefully I can answer all the questions after, they, um, after that day. Yeah. Do what? The 15th. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that could happen. I always wait for that, you know, every time we go, um, which would be marvelous. Absolutely. I'm going to pray for tomorrow, yeah. Barbara starts her radiation tomorrow. But she's cancer-free, you know, so this is good. Barbara Chavis and Buddy that sit over here. So, yay. That was a good praise report for her. So, yeah, whenever I find all these uh, answers to all these questions, because I have no idea, honestly. Um, and I try not to look a lot of stuff up on Google because I think it will cause me anxiety. So I'm going to wait until I hear it from the people who know what they're doing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I stay away from uh, a lot of stuff that, uh, of course, I don't have time. I just, you know, uh, generally... Uh, uh, do all the stuff you got to do, wash clothes, cook, and uh, do my schoolwork, and go to church, and go to Walmart. It's about all I do. Yeah. Absolutely. Not something that's going to cause more anxiety. <laughs> got enough. Y'all, it's my um, beautiful necklace that Margie gave me. How about if I put it over here? Think that. How about that? Can you still hear me? That way this won't. <laughs> okay. So, guys, um, we've got a lesson about love. And the next couple of weeks are going to come from examples of love in the Gospels. We just did Joseph. And how many of y'all, I tell you, Joseph just blessed me. That uh, thing that he said that he went ahead to preserve life, that has just rung in my head. That, that particular, you know how the Holy Spirit will, give you and you and, you know, each of us that different thing that we need on where we are in our lives. That was a wonderful month. I really enjoyed uh, anything out of Genesis I like. I don't know why I love that book. Anything out of Revelation. I like all of it. In between stuff, it's all good. Uh, and again, I commend you for coming and, and seeking and hearing the Word of God. Isn't that amazing? It's the Word that helps us through anything. I mean, no matter what you're doing or what you're going through, if you hadn't got that little sliver of word that morning or what you've studied or what you listen to on the radio, you know, with Caleb or um, 91.7 or, or whatever, you know, you listen to. Um, I like 91.7 because it has all that preaching on it. On the way to school, I hit um, Dr. David Jeremiah and then um, um, Jack Graham, uh, you know, depending on the, the time that I'm flying into the parking lot. <laughs> so um, it's just what we put into our hearts, and I uh, commend you for putting word into your hearts because I don't know how people do it apart from the word. I really don't. It's just amazing to me. All right, um, now that we've read that psalm that came out of that time period that David was uh, being attacked, and there's more psalms that he wrote while he was in the cave um, hiding from Saul, while he had gone over to uh, live with uh, the Philistines and he was pretending like he was a madman. Do you remember that time period? And he pretended like he was fighting on behalf of the Philistines and uh, uh, was supposed to be attacking Israel when he was really attacking Philistine villages. So, I mean, all the things, that there's different psalms that he writes. But what we want to do is go to Psalm 19, not Psalm, I'm so sorry, 1 Samuel 19, so that we can... Um, Look at this love that he had with Jonathan, 1 Samuel 19. And I'm going to find it. I hope y'all are already there. Y'all are probably using your textbook, aren't you? I, I, I can't. i got to go to the book. 1 Samuel. If I can. There she goes. All right. 1 Samuel 19. Get my readers here. All right. You 
know, I also uh, had a praise report too, uh, Rosa, since you said that my uh, nephew, um, my brother has three boys. Um, his oldest, Mark, is uh, uh, early 50s. I grew up with him, you know, because my, my siblings were having children as I was a child. And uh, he actually has more grandchildren than I have. <laughs> but uh, he had a heart attack Thursday a week ago. And, um, of course, uh, went to the hospital and they were able, he had a 90% blockage and uh, put a stent in. And he's home and doing well. And uh, I think he's back in church. <laughs> That's a good thing. Amen. Um, according to my brother, so we're, we're hopeful there. And that things like that will draw us close to the Lord, won't it? 1 Samuel 19, um, David flees from Saul. So uh, Saul is speaking to Jonathan, I'm in verse 1, uh, his son and, and to all of his servants that they should kill David. So what's he doing? He's given a um, commandment to go kill uh you know, he's given a directive, and this is a royal order. This is coming from the king. Let's go kill uh, David. So he's plotting, um, and he's trying to get the help of Jonathan and his servants. And it says, but Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted greatly in David. And he, he loved David. And uh, Jonathan, there was something that uh, clicked in Jonathan's head that knew that this was God's uh, appointed and anointed servant. And Jonathan somehow, and I think this is just the uh, external Holy Spirit, because remember, he did not indwell men in that day, but he could still do the same thing that he does inside. He still directs, he, even though he was over rather than in, he still directed Jonathan that, hey, this is the next, next king, it's not going to be you. Jonathan just knew that. And so uh, Jonathan, you know, Saul put him in a, a really bad situation, didn't he? Uh, and we just started, Brittany, 1 Samuel 19. And he, it put him in a bad situation because he delighted greatly. He loved him. And God had, had connected and made a bond between these two young men. They were both soldiers. They were both uh, apparently greatly athletic. In my uh, romantic heart, I like to think they were both probably good-looking guys. I don't know, you know. <laughs> That's just my romantic heart. C can't prove that. But this friendship that, that was between them and it was sealed by a covenant that they had made with each other in um, uh, 1 Samuel 18. And they you know, said nothing would come between uh, you and me. And, the, and uh, Jonathan had given him a couple of uh, gifts that were uh, you know, portions of what uh, princes uh, possessed. And he knew he was th that that was David's destiny to be the next king. Even though he was officially the crown prince, I mean the next in line. Uh, because Saul had many children, but Jonathan was the man. What do you think about that? When somebody de defers, he deferred to the other guy when it was his rightful place. It takes a lot, especially to know that you know. And I mean, to me, that takes a lot of courage. And now you turn around that uh, Saul says, I want you to kill this, this guy. Now, what, what's going on with Saul? He's jealous. The servant girls, remember, after they were coming back from killing uh, the Philistines at Goliath, uh, that Saul has killed his thousands, but David is ten thousands. So he's jealous. And it tells us a little later that Saul is afraid of David. He's afraid of him. What do you think, Mr. Lee? That jealousy. Same spirit that got a hold of Cain, got a hold of, yeah, that's a good point, that, that envy, uh, because Cain was, you know, jealous of what Abel had, and he killed him. So Saul was jealous of David. He's going to kill him. And so we want to talk about that, that spirit. Let's, let, let's move on and, and get to that. Uh, David, at this point, um, Jonathan goes and tells him, my father Saul seeks to kill you. So it took a lot of guts for Jonathan to go tell David. Now, what good would that do, Jonathan? You tell me, just from what I told you, tell me the characteristics of Jonathan. He's going by what Paul said, that you, you know, esteem others higher than yourselves. He's courageous. He's not selfish. He's, he's got the integrity 
to be uh, the person that he's supposed to be. It's like he knows his place. You know, I know my place in certain situations. You know, when I'm at school, I'm not in charge. Principal's in charge. I know my place. When I'm in Miss uh, Owen's room, if I'm visiting her room, I know my place. I defer to her. When I'm in her classroom, she's the queen of that country. Right? You know your place when you're where you're supposed to be. So this kid knew his place. He just knows it. You know, they had to have found out about Samuel. All that had to get out. And Samuel anointed him. Everybody had to, that, that. That news had to have gotten out. That's not such a big place over there. It's like Dillon County. Everybody just knows stuff. So, yes, he could. And he did. He chose not to kill him because even though I think in the culture of that day, it would have been acceptable for that to have happened. In, in that monarchy type of culture where you had a king. Now I know that they were a new kingship and I knew that I know that they had just started being this mon monarchism, but still Jonathan, he, go ahead. Yep, hang on to that thought. Right. Anointed. I think Jonathan and David connected because they both had such a heart for God. That's what was their bond. You just said something, Mr. Ronald. That was good. Say it again. You know, and uh, that's the truth. It goes back to what the disciples said um, whenever they were beat and they were imprisoned, imprisoned and beat and told not to preach the gospel again. And they turned to each other and they said, we ought to obey God rather than men. So when you know that it's wrong, and, and Jonathan knew, thou shalt not kill. He knew it was wrong to murder. So there's that, that understanding of the word and the, the regulations, the, the principles. It shows the integrity of, you know, how you live in your everyday life. You know, what, do we take things that aren't ours when nobody's looking? Do we, um, I'm trying to think of the Ten Commandments, you know, do we covet other stuff enough to where we'll, you know, step over them and o around them and through them to get to that position, which is what, you know, he didn't covet. He didn't want to kill. We ought to obey God rather than men. And I think what you said, Mr. Ronald, goes back to what Roberts, it, they were two men after God's own heart. Now, Jonathan ends up losing his life with his daddy on a hillside, uh, Mount Gilboa or wherever that is. So they do, uh, he does end up dying with his father. Um, so, you know, it's amazing Um I really do feel like we'll see Jonathan in uh, heaven one day. So we can ask all these great questions, and I hope they show these videos <laughs> that replays what's going on and, and how it had happened. We could spend centuries doing that, couldn't we? Yes. Jonathan was right and wrong. Yeah, he and did. That's, that's the key to everything. You have to do right and wrong. Now somebody right. taught Jonathan well, too. Right. <laughs> That's exactly right. And I start wondering about, you know, he was raised, you know, to know the right from wrong and raised to understand. And I wonder about his mom. You know, did she, yeah, was there a mother there that's not ever mentioned?
that did a great job raising her kids. I don't know. You know, so there you go. One's off for Jonathan's mom. <laughs> but uh, it, my father Saul seeks to kill you. Therefore, please be on your guard until morning. Stay in a secret place and hide. And I'll go out and stand beside my father in the field where you are. And I will speak with my father about you. Then what I observe, I will tell you. So um, he's promised him he's going to speak to dad on his behalf. And Mr. Ronald, that goes back to what you said. You know, he's going against dad. And I'm curious, you know, what kind of rift this calls between the father and the son. Because you know y'all don't like it when your kids don't do what you tell them to do. And they do the very opposite. What? So that's a problem that, you know, need, probably needed to be rectified. But apparently Jonathan and Saul made it through it. I mean, we're not told all of this, but you can see in the relationship that they apparently made it through it because Jonathan continued to fight with his dad when they went against the Philistines. Now Saul had his hands full during the kingdom while he was king. He was always fighting these Philistines. Even when he was chasing David, he was between fighting the Philistines and chasing David, fighting the Philistines and chasing David, or sitting in his palace and being uh, chronically depressed. So today I'm going to give you some ideas, um, and Robin will appreciate these things, about some of the, the mania that <laughs> Saul is going through, since um, that's what Robin knows about. Jonathan told him, you know, told David, and, uh, you know, there's... So much to that, we have to be careful when, um, you know, your, your leadership wants to kill somebody else that's uh, in leadership. Because Saul had made David a commander, and then he wants to kill him. I wonder if this bothered David a little bit down the line when he had Uriah killed. I wonder if he thought about all this. He did. And he actually repented after David didn't kill him in the cave. I'm so sorry. I know you have a good heart. Of course, it didn't change him from chasing him and trying to kill him. Hmm. Yeah. Right. Because how did, uh, did, did you hear her point? David must have had a lot of trust in Jonathan. Because how did he not know that Jonathan couldn't have been on the sly? Yeah, at any point, but he knew he wouldn't. That's interesting. But he, and he did, he helped David. And he said, you know, pretty much, um, you know, I, I, I'm not going to help my father do something I know is wrong. You know, and like you just said, he could have said, you know, he could have taken, Jonathan could have taken the neutral ground and said, I know that what my father wants to do is wrong, but then on the other hand, I'm not going to do anything to stop him either. He could have just stayed neutral. Ooh, that's a good thought. Hmm. I'm just going to let God work it out. You know, sometimes we do the same thing, and we don't stand up to what we know we should do, and we just stay neutral, and we're going to let God work it out. Hmm, that's a thought. <laughs> Ouch to me too, uh, yeah. Yeah. He did have the courage to stand up against what's wrong. Absolutely, and especially your dad. And, uh, you know, the patriarchal system of that day, that, that was a tough stand that the kid took. So my, my hat's off to him. And that's, uh, you know, love the intercedes. That's the name of the lesson, love the intercedes. So, you know, Jonathan speaks out and says, you know, but let's look and see what he says in uh, verses 4 and 5. Jonathan spoke well of David to Saul, his father. So they're out in this field, they're talking. Let not the king sin against his servant, against David, because he's not sinned against you. Why are you want to kill him? He's not trying to kill you. And because his works have been very good towards you. He and then he gives him an example. For he took his life in his hands 
and killed the Philistine, and the Lord brought about a great deliverance for all Israel. You saw it and rejoiced. In other words, it's kind of like, what happened? Well, where did you go wrong in there, Dad? What are you thinking now? You saw it and rejoiced. Why then will you sin against innocent blood to kill David without a cause? So, uh, you know, Jonathan did more than just speak, you know, to or, or tell uh, Jonathan that he was going to try to help him. He spoke directly to the king. And he, brought, and he spoke well of David. He brought about instances and examples of how he's helped and what he did. Don't you remember when he wanted to marry my sister, Mikael? You said he had to go um, sl slay a hundred Philistines and bring me their foreskins. I hate to think about how he did that. And, you know, so then look at what he did. Because he kind of, you know, did that and then he didn't give him, uh, that, that was actually the first daughter, not Mikael, but the first daughter. He went and killed a hundred Philistines, but another guy had already married her. So it's like, you know, he gave him these assignments and he fulfilled every one of everything that Saul asked him to do, he did. He was integrous. And, um, you know, you got a certain opinion of him, Dad, but I don't share that opinion. This is what I think. I love David. I support David. first one might have had a hankering toward him too if he was a good looking guy. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's that romantic heart. Well, you know, he goes and says, uh, he's bold enough to tell his dad that his anger and jealousy is sin. He has not sinned against you. He was bold and said, hey, he's not sinned against you. Why are you wanting to sin against him? Made up, yes. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Saul is an example of us, isn't he? Where we want to get rid of that person. Ban them from our life. Banish them. Saul felt, here's the thing, and we feel the same way since you said that. Saul felt like David had sinned against him. And Saul felt more righteous in his cause because he's also knowing that Jonathan, he wants Jonathan to be the king. He wants us to stay in the family and that heredity thing. So he's, there's a lot of dynamics going on in Saul's head which may have been right because it should have been a hereditary thing. But at the same time, wasn't God's plan. Touch not. That's right. Oh, and it has, yeah, absolutely. That's right. Don't say nothing at all, that's right. So we have to be careful what we say against God's anointed. And like uh, Mr. Larry just said, you know, we've spoken out against men of God and, and, and things get, you know, circulating throughout uh, the, the community. And what it does is it causes unbelievers not to want to come to church. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, the, the leaders of the Sanhedrin, yeah, the religious leaders wanted to kill him. Absolutely. There's a great comparison there. Out to get him. Mm 
Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. It can be damaging. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, and when he was trying to tell him, you know, this guy hadn't sinned against you. He killed the Philistine. He killed Goliath. Look what he did. He, he brought out the good. Now, he could have found, like you said, damaging things to say about David. Everybody's got stuff that they've done. You can, you can, you can bring out anything, you know, that's negative about anybody easily. Don't have to look too far to find people's faults. And you could he could have brought out damaging things against him, um, like Miss Linda just said, but he didn't. He brought out the good. Daddy killed the Philistine. He hadn't sinned against you. Um, and and um, he, But the thing that Saul kept going back to, like Brittany said, is he was going back to um, his, his feelings. He felt like David wasn't doing it for a righteous reason, and he was doing it to advance himself. Because we can have the... It's amazing when you talk to, about somebody to somebody, and you got all the negative stuff to say, and I love it when I'm being nasty, rotten, and corrupt. And somebody says, but wait a minute, hadn't you thought they did this, they did that? I need somebody to challenge me on that. When I'm having my pity parties... <laughs> When I think I'm right about somebody, and I'm not. I'm just, I'm mad at them. I'm angry at them. And it's usually over something that I probably started. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, and that sweet red. What? But I know, I know. Well, go Cindy. There you go. <laughs> I love that girl. David did it just to become famous and take my throne. That's why he wanted to kill that Philistine. No. David saw somebody challenging his God. See, and we here's where we can get in trouble. And I'll get you in just a second. We can misconstrue what people's intentions are. That's why we got to be careful judging folks because we don't know the intent of their heart. I've just got to learn to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Unless I need to correct, you know, kids or, you know, st stuff like that. Or Go ahead, Mr. Larry. I'll tell you. This, this is a good lesson. Don't let this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was. Yes, he did. So here's where that brings us into what happened to him. And I know this isn't in the lesson, but I want to get to this. Um, after he speaks well of him, and why are you sinning against him? In verse 6, Saul heeded the voice of Jonathan, and Saul swore, as the Lord lives, he shall not be killed. So he repents for the moment. So Jonathan brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence as in times past. And there was war again. Boy, isn't that just a picture of life? Every, uh, just after things calm down and you get over that thing and you make it through it, it rises up again. That, and it's usually that same stinking issue that you have with that same person. What is up with that? I don't know. <laughs> so war, there was war again and David went out and fought with the Philistines. He struck them with a mighty blow and they fled from, fled from him. David did what he was trained to do and did it well. He struck down the Philistines. Now the distressing spirit from the Lord came upon Saul as he sat in his house with his spear in his hand and David was playing music with his hand. 
Now get the contrast of what just happened there. They reconciled. Jonathan brings David back into the presence. It seems to have all worked out. The command to kill David's revoked. We're back to normal. We're playing pretty again. Life is okay. And they're, they're together like they were in previous days. So what does it mean that a distressing spirit, and this is what I want to end up on because I thought this was interesting, a distressing spirit came upon Saul. Now think about everything that Saul's been through. When he disobeyed God and did that, uh, oh, when he sacrificed ahead of Samuel, because only the priest is supposed to do the sacrificing. And uh, he, um, he did that. And then a little bit later, he disobeys something that Samuel says. And when he, God told him to kill all the Philistines, and he kept the king Agagite ahead, uh, alive. And he, Saul gets there, Samuel gets there and says, what's all this bleeding I hear? It's sheep and cattle and goats and everything. And Saul said, you know, I want to keep all of this so we could sacrifice it to God. And he said, no, God told you to wipe out everything. So Sam, excuse me, Saul disobeyed Samuel, but he was disobeying God and God's directives. And God knew all that. He knew all that was going to happen. Yeah, God knows the end of everything. So this distressing spirit, uh, when Saul was anointed king, uh, Samuel predicted that the spirit of God would come upon him and give him the needed skills and wisdom that he would need. That's in 1 Samuel 10. You're going to be okay. God's going to anoint you and give you what you need. But later on, like I just said, Saul had disobeyed the directives that Samuel had given through, you know, of course, from the Lord. And the Lord rejected him, and it happened in 1 Samuel 13 and 1 Samuel 14, uh, 15. So he, he disobeys. He doesn't do what he's supposed to do. And we know that uh, God had sent Samuel to anoint David, you know, and he did the whole thing going through all the brothers. No, you know, that's, they're not all here. Bring me that one that's out in the field tending the sheep. He anointed him. And from that day forward, God's spirit departed over Saul and went to David. So when that happened, Saul left himself completely open to attacks that are...